Uh, good afternoon or evening, whatever it is. Um, we've just concluded our special major league meeting and uh, Mr. Rob Manford has been elected the 10th commissioner of baseball. And um, we had quite a lengthy day, an interesting day where we had a significant number of votes, but uh, in the end the vote was unanimous, 30 to nothing. And um, uh, so the process is complete. And I want to say to um, Bill DeWitt, the chairman of the committee, and there are other members here, that they've done a remarkable job. I know I told Bill the day I called him that uh, he'd probably hate me when this is over because of giving him this job. But um, they were thorough, and this has been comprehensive, and this has been inclusive, and it's everything that I hoped it would be. So. The meeting today was, uh, you know, there were people, as you know, there no, obviously not going to fool anybody in this room. Um, but it was, you know, there were differences of opinion, but in the end we came together and did what we, we always do, and that's do uh, what uh, the majority, uh, over three quarters, wanted. And so it's been a, it's been a great day for baseball, and I'm, I'm very pleased tonight and proud that we did it. So my Privilege now to introduce Mr. Bill DeWitt of the St. Louis Cardinals, who was the chairman of this committee. Bill. Thanks, Bud. Um, as you all know, we had a lengthy search process, succession process, three and a half months, multiple meetings. And I want to, first of all, thank our committee of seven for really being at every single meeting, 100% attendance, did a great job, and obviously took a um, very seriously. Um, when we examined a number of candidates, uh, both inside and outside the game, particularly the ones outside the game that had uh, ties to MLB, uh, in the end we ended up with three very strong, highly qualified candidates, uh, any of whom uh, would have uh, uh, served baseball well and have served baseball well. In the end, uh, Rob Manford was elected uh, because of his dynamic leadership, his passion for the game, uh, his ability uh, to lead the staff in New York, which he has done, and um, his overall uh, ability to deal with labor issues and really all aspects of the game. He's worked on on-field matters. Uh, he has a great knowledge of club operations. And when we put together the uh, requirements of a commissioner, he really checked all the boxes. So, you know, we're thrilled that Rob is the 10th commissioner, and I would be remiss if I didn't say uh, he was fo he's following in big footsteps. So, uh, you know, Bud as the ninth commissioner will go down as the greatest commissioner in baseball history, and uh, Rob will fill those shoes well as we move forward. Thank you. I'd like at this time to introduce Rob. Thank you, Bill. I have to say I'm uh, tremendously honored uh, by the confidence that the owners showed in me today, uh, electing me to be the 10th Commissioner of Baseball. I agree with Bill. Um, I have very big shoes to fill um, in following Commissioner Sealing. I'm also very excited. Um, I'm anxious to get back to New York. Uh, to see my wife, Colleen, and our four children, Megan, Mike, Jane, and Mary Claire. Um, they've been following via text message, um, and uh, it's not a very satisfactory form of uh, interaction at a time like this, so I'm very anxious to get home. I'd like to thank uh, Bill DeWitt and the Succession Committee. Uh, they did a tremendous job. Uh, this was a uh, very uh, thorough and for the candidates' arduous process, I have to say, however, I enjoyed it. It was well run and well constructed. Um, I'd also like to thank Tim Brosnan and Tom Warner, uh, the two finalists. Uh, they were extremely high qualified candidates, highly qualified candidates, um, and I, I felt like it was a uh, uh, very noble competition between, between the three of us. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say, and uh, this is 
by no means least. Um, I, I'd like to thank Commissioner Seelig. Uh, he has been a friend and mentor to me the entire 25 years that I've been in the game. Uh, there is no question that I would not be standing here today if it were not for Bud. And I hope that I will perform as the 10th commissioner in a way that will add to his great legacy. Uh, thank you very much. Questions for any of the three? Uh, Mr. Rogers. Stand up for uh, Mr. Seelig and also uh, Mr. DeWitt. Um, you know, we've seen Rob for years in, in his current role, but as you look forward to his new role, what would you say you expect from his style of leadership and, you know, what most excites you about him? Well, I'll add having worked with Rob now on a daily basis for a long time. He's obviously smart and by the way at the outset so we don't get too serious here it pains me to pay him any compliments he, uh, he often remarks about that and he's right and um, but he is he's he's had great experience the last couple of years Phil he's dealt in every area and I've given him many tasks and a lot of them not very pleasant quite frankly but it, he's done them well I there is no doubt in my mind he has the training the temperament the experience to be a very, very successful commissioner, and I have justifiably very high expectations. Bill, you want to answer? Oh, you want to answer? Oh, well. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, some of Rob's greatest attributes are his ability to reach consensus, uh, as to get the required votes, uh, MLB, uh, obviously makes it harder than some of the other sports, and rightfully so. It's 75 percent required uh, yes votes versus, say, two-thirds two in some of the other sports. Um, you have to have broad-based support, and I think, you, you know, so many people in all, on all, in all aspects of the industry, large, middle, small markets, uh, talked about how he was sensitive to each of their needs, and I think that's a tremendous aspect of a commissioner um, to treat everyone equally it's about 30 clubs it's not about one club or you know one group of clubs it's about all 30 clubs and I think that's where he'll excel Rob, Rob what do you think your selection means about the vision the owners want for the future of the game I think the uh, most striking thing for me over the last couple of days is how passionate the owners are about the way the game is played, um, the business of baseball. And I think there's a, a, a huge amount of uh, consensus about uh, certain types of efforts that we will be undertaking to, to move the game forward. I think in particular, the modernization of the game that you saw with instant replay, innovations like that that Commissioner Seelig has begun. I think the owners have a vision of the game continuing to move forward in, in, in that vein. Rob, uh, what, what do you think the most important, what are your biggest challenges, your most important two or three challenges that you're going to have to attack upon taking office? I, I haven't even uh, <laughs> been official 15 minutes. Uh, I haven't had a long time to, to think about challenges. I, I think probably the single biggest challenge is filling the shoes of the uh, gentleman that stands to my right. Um, he's established a uh, great tradition of unity among the 30 clubs, and um, I'm going to work very hard to try to maintain that tradition of unity as we move the game forward. Rob, as you talk to people in the industry the last few months and going through today, what are the priorities you stated that you see for the sport in the next few years and the areas that you see you wanting to tackle? You know, uh, Ron, I don't want to, I, I really don't want to get too deeply today into um, agendas and areas that we want to tackle. I, I will say this about the process. The, the process provided a great opportunity for the candidates to, to talk about issues they saw in the game 
and maybe more important, provided a great opportunity to get feedback from the clubs as to where they wanted to see the game go. Um, I just I prefer not to do specifics beyond that tonight. Rob, in the last two or three hours or so, what do you think won over the other side to your side? Is there any? You know, I had the best seat for this process, actually. I, I was upstairs in the room. We were watching a game on the MLB network. Um, actually, Tony Petiti was sitting with me critiquing his own broadcast. Um, so I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. Um, you know, we were, um, I was obviously outside the process and um, don't know all that much about what went on in the room. Rob, while the vote was 30 to nothing, at some time there was some opposition. Could you characterize that opposition toward your candidacy and just say how you plan to handle bridging those gaps? What I said to the owners um, when I came down after the vote um, is that uh, I didn't really want to even think about who was on what side of what issue at points in the process and that my commitment to the owners um, was that I would work extremely hard day in and day out to convince all 30 of them that they had made a great decision today. Um, in, in terms of reasons for opposition, somebody else have to talk about that. Rob, Peter Schmuck. Um, Hi, Peter. Throughout your career, you've been very much involved in the competitive balance uh, quest that Commissioner Seeley has been involved in. I'm curious if one of your early priorities will be the underperforming franchises and what you can do to help them, the Tampa Bay type franchises? Like I said, I really don't want to go into my priorities tonight. I will say this, um, like Commissioner Seelig, I believe that competitive balance is the bedrock of the product we sell and it will always be a priority for baseball no matter who the commissioner is. Rob, what has been the key to your work in achieving labor peace and what are your thoughts for the future? Well, I think the most important part of good labor relations is ongoing communication between the bargaining parties. Uh, I, I think that it's very difficult to try to deal with labor in a discrete six month or one year period. You have to work at it day in and day out. Um, I've been very blessed. I have an outstanding labor staff in New York now and Frank Coonley sitting over here. I had a very good outstanding labor staff from the, the day I started in the commissioner's office and I think everyone on that staff worked very hard to communicate. It's not about making friends, it's about making sure that the other side understands where you're coming from and I, I think that the entire labor relations department in New York has done a great job at that over a long period of time. 